On the bench today, we have a Nomiku 10,000. Nomiku 10,000. It's a sous vide machine, which basically is a way to cook your food in like a vacuum packed pack. You put it in a pot of water and you set this thing to the temperature that you want the food to cook to and it will get to that temperature and hold that temperature while circulating the water. This one, unfortunately, has developed an intermittent problem. It's actually working right now. You can see it's slowly heating up the, the water. That, that flickering of the screen isn't real. It's just from the iPhone camera. Um, and uh, what it does is it will intermittently show an error message says, uh-oh, pump stopped or low water. Um, and I've already done some troubleshooting on this thing. I figured out it's the pump. Uh, the pump sometimes kind of gets stuck and won't go. I was able to find a, a similar pump as a replacement, uh, that one there, and uh, we're going to swap it in there. So I'll show you how you open this thing up. There's really very, very little service information that you're going to find on these things. The company went out of business a while ago, and they pretty much shut down uh, all of their website stuff. So hopefully this video will help some of you in the future. So opening this thing up is actually pretty easy. Um, there's a cover here, um, probably meant to be cleaned every once in a while. This just slides off, like so. And then there are um, four screws on the bottom here that pull this uh, unit off. So let me go ahead and I will loosen those up. I've already had this thing open um, and did some troubleshooting with the pump. Um, but I wasn't able to really fix the pump. Sometimes it spins, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and so I was able to find a similar one, which will hopefully work. Now, the only difference, the pump that I found is actually a 5-volt pump and not a 12-volt pump. So I'm going to have to do a little extra work to adapt the power coming off this power head to work with a 5 volt pump. But if you have this problem and you're lucky enough to find the exact same pump, you won't have to do that. So, oops, there go my screws. So this just slides off. Let me get these screws. Oh, one went down on the floor. Oh, we'll find that one later. And there's a couple more right here. So yeah, so this tape job was because I've already had the pump out. This is the actual pump. And so let me go ahead and uh, open this up and I'll show you, show you that. Okay, so this, uh, again, if you can find the exact replacement pump, um, that'll be a lot easier because you won't have to open up the head part of this. To get at the pump, you just kind of unwrap this little flexi plastic thingy comes loose. Um, there's a sensor here um, to sense that it's actually sitting in water. Um, that that message could also come up, I guess, if the thing wasn't sitting in water, but in my case, it related to the pump. Um, and so the pump just sits in that holder. It's attached with these two wires. Um, let me put in a picture of this pump and its exact model number. I was not able to find the exact one on eBay, so that's why I wound up getting this other replacement one, um, which I thought could also work the same way on 12 volts DC, but seems to work best on 5 volts. So uh, that'll kind of be the next part of this video. I'll open this up and uh, we'll build a little 12 volt to 5 volt converter and uh, put in put in the uh, this other pump. Um, so yeah, so this I had already done, this cut wires. Um, so another thing of note, um, this, these pumps are, have the same body, but different heads. And you'll find, if you find these online, if you can find this exact pump model, even if it has a different plastic head on it with, you know, different spouts, that part comes off. And I'll show you how that works. And uh, you can just swap them over. Um, the other thing to note when you look at the models of these pumps, um, you want the one with the S in the model number. So you'll see this one is um, got a uh, the, the model number there with an S at the end. Um, 
and that means that it's submersible. Um, and the H means that it's capable of being in higher temperatures. So the H is pretty important too. Um, so this one that I got um, has the H and the S, um, but it's dual voltage. And so, again, I thought this could just run like the old one off 12 volts, but apparently not. I had to jumper these two wires together to get it work. It work, does work on 12 volts, but it pumps much, much harder. Um, it's got a much higher water flow than, uh, than this old one. And so I'm going to modify the circuitry in here to work on 5 volts. So there's just a few notes on the pumps, um, if you can find those on eBay or elsewhere. Not the easiest thing to find. Okay, so let's finish opening this up and I'll show you how you get in this head unit. Um, you will need a Torx T9 uh, a screw, screwdriver, Torx driver, to do that. There are two screws here on the bottom um, that need to come out and then four screws behind these little these little insert covers and they they peel out easy now because I've already had them out. Um, but there's a little bit of goopy stuff in there that holds those in. So let me get that open and we'll just go ahead and open this thing up. So we have to get these guys loose. Two of them. They're a little bit longer than the other four. And if you've had yours working You'll be amazed at how long these uh, heat plates stay warm. Mine is still, mine is still pretty toasty. I can touch it now, but it's pretty hot. And these screws are kind of down in there a little ways, so we'll get them out. out. One, two, three. Somebody stayed behind. Where are you? That one there. There he is. Okay, so then this just lifts off like that. Got a little bit of foil inside and now you can see the electronics. Um, let me switch to the other camera and I'll give you a little closer look and show you the modifications that, uh, that I'm going to try to do. So inside this thing is uh, quite a bit of electronics. Um, the wires that we're most concerned about are these um, that feed the, mo the pump, the motor, um, and it comes off of this connector here. Um, it's, it's 12 volts DC, and so what I'm going to have to do to adapt that to 5 volts is uh, rig up a little um, circuit to convert the 12 volts to 5 volts. I'll just use a uh, LM7805 to do that, and I'll pop the schematic in here for that um, and uh, find a place somewhere in here to, to stick that. It won't be very big once I'm done. Um, it, the motor doesn't draw a lot of current. The uh, original 12-volt motor draws about uh, 200 milliamps, a little bit more, um, when I put the new motor in there with 5 volts, it was a little bit over 100 milliamps. And so um, the LM7805 won't have any problems with that. Um, so I also need to swap, uh, as I mentioned before, the, uh, the, the, the pipe mountings are different. Um, this pump obviously came out of something that had some tubing attached to it. Um, this one just sits inside the... Uh, silicon housing like you saw and so the the motor shell itself is the same and so if I remove these four screws off the top I can swap I can just do a swap and so let me show you that and you can then see also the inside of one of these motors
Yeah, it's a really kind of weird symptom on the old pump. It'll work for a while, um, and then it just won't spin. And if I open it up and kind of shift the, uh, the 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 strata or the core inside, then it then it will um, until I stop it again, <laughs> and then it won't go again. So, like I said, this part just lifts off like so, um, and then inside here are the magnets. And there's also, don't lose sight of it, there's a little, there's a little plastic, um, I guess kind of like a glide washer. And that actually goes on the bottom of this. So here's how that's going to go together. Well, let me just put this one back together and I'll show you how, how I do it. So you just slide this guy on here. See, there's another little washer thing there too. Um, so you slide that down, you pop... This little guy, he's got a key on him, so he just kind of sits in there one way. He would drop on straight. Okay, so see, he's in there now. And then you just kind of carefully slide the whole thing on. Um, the top is keyed to the housing by this one um, fastener. It has, a, has a, a, a cutout in it, and that corresponds with this... With this uh, bump out there so you know which way it goes. So you just kind of drop that on there and you've got it back together again. So I'm going to do that now with this other motor and uh, swap the tops over. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do here is to connect the motor up. I had clipped out the old motor, um, 12 volt motor, and this is the new motor. And so I'm using these um, heat shrink butt connectors and we'll just put those on there. With this a motor being 5 volts, you have to connect the red and the blue wires together. The yellow wire doesn't isn't needed, so I just put a little bit of heat shrink on the end of that to kind of seal it off, and so I'll go ahead and attach those on there, and we'll put the motor back in. Okay, so we got those butt connectors on there. The motor, this is the spout, goes towards this hole, so he just sits in here like this, and then we clamp this part on. Like that. Get those out of the way. And then we can slide our bottom piece back on. As soon as I find where I set it, here it is. Got to move this little clamp out of the way too. And then that slides on like so. All right. And remember this had four screws that go in there, so we will close that up. And uh, I'm going to give it a test with my 5 volt supply here before I close it all up and uh, build that, before I build that circuit and close it up, I will uh, give it a test. Well, so reassembling this unit is just the reverse of the disassembly. Um, I actually did wind up not doing the 5 volt conversion. Um, the pump seemed to run pretty slow, so I just went ahead and reconnected it, the 12 volt line just like it was with the old pump um, and that seems to work okay so yeah so to put this back together you've got the four Torx T8s I believe they are yep T8s um, they go in these holes here and then you've got these little plugs that can I'll probably put a little dab of silicon on there to hold them in a little better um, and then you've got the two screws here underneath um, uh, actually, there's four screws on this part of the case that need to go back on there. And, uh, and then this guy just slides on, like so. And let's uh, give it a try. It worked before, so hopefully it'll still work now. Okay, let's plug it in and see what happens. You should see the boot up screen, Nomiku starting up, there goes the pump, 
kicking into action. Water's currently at 73 degrees. Temperature set to 120. Now it's definitely throwing out more water than it did with the old pump, um, the one that doesn't work. But uh, I guess that's okay. So we're going to consider this a wrap. And uh, again, if you can find the exact replacement motor, um, more power to you. The one I put in there does seem to work fine uh, using the 12 volt uh, connection from the circuit board in there. And uh, there you go. Hope this helps you.